In this video, we're going to look at how to use integration by parts to evaluate definite integrals. We start by recalling the integration by parts formula for indefinite integrals, which says that the indefinite integral of u dv is going to equal uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. If we have a definite integral of the same form, such as the integral from a to b of u dv, then we can use the exact same integration by parts formula, just evaluated at our limits. So we have uv evaluated from a to b minus the integral of v du evaluated from a to b. The part that we should be very careful about is this um, first part on the right-hand side, the expression uv evaluated from a to b. This is the most easily forgotten uh, part of applying the integration by parts to a definite integral, and of course it is crucial to obtain the correct value. In this example, we're asked to evaluate the integral from 1 to e of x cubed natural log x dx. The first step here is to choose our u and dv, and here we have no choice. We must let u equal the natural log of x because the natural log of x is not a function that we can anti-differentiate, and therefore we must have that be the function u, which we can differentiate. This means dv is everything else in the integrand, so x cubed dx. Once we have u and dv, we can see that du is going to be 1 over x dx, the derivative of natural log x, and v is going to be x to the fourth over 4, um, or 1 fourth x to the fourth, and unfortunately, that is a little bit more complicated than x cubed, but because of the natural log x term, we really have no choice but to let u and dv work out this way. Now applying the integration by parts formula, we see that the integra integral from 1 to e of x cubed natural log of x dx will be u times v, uh, which will be x to the fourth over 4 natural log of x evaluated from 1 to e minus the integral from 1 to e of v du. So we have x to the fourth over 4 times 1 over x dx. And of course, uh, we can simplify this integral a bit. We can bring out the constant of 1 fourth and x to the fourth times 1 over x simplifies to be just simply x cubed. And so our definite integral that we started with is going to be x to the fourth over four natural log x evaluated from one to e minus one fourth the integral from one to e of x cubed dx. So now we just have to evaluate the two expressions on the right hand side. Um, our first expression, we're going to substitute e into uh, the, the formula x to the fourth over four natural log x to get e to the fourth over four natural log of e, which is one, uh, minus one to the fourth over four, which is one fourth times natural log of one, which is zero. And here we're going to have one fourth uh, times x to the fourth over four evaluated from one to e. Our first term here simplifies simply to e to the 4 over 4. And then we're going to subtract negative 1 fourth times the quantity of the integral here, which will be e to the 4th over 4 minus 1 to the 4th over 4. So e to the 4th over 4 minus 1 fourth. We could certainly keep the expression in this form since this is just a, a number, even though it's written in a complicated fashion. Or if we wanted to clean it up a little bit, we could rewrite this as e to the fourth over four minus e to the four over 16 plus 1 16th. We could certainly find a common denominator if we wanted and simplify it a bit more. But at this point, we can see that the numerical value of what this integral will represent. And so this is uh, fine for an answer for this particular definite integral. If you'd like to try a similar example, you can pause the video and evaluate the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x cosine x dx. The full solution will appear in a few seconds.
For this one, we can choose u equal to x and dv equal to cosine x dx, and therefore du equals dx and v equals sine x. We can substitute those functions into the integration by parts formula and in evaluate x sine x from 0 to pi over 2, and that will result in simply pi over 2 once everything is simplified. And then we subtract from that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x dx. An antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x, so we evaluate that from 0 to pi over 2, and we end up getting 0 plus 1 there, which is, of course, 1. And so our final value for our integral is pi over 2 minus 1.